What's good, Trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. And y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one share at a time. So today, man, I got somebody real special in here, a lieutenant, part of the Trappers Anonymous group, part of the Wall Street Trapper family, my lieutenant, Jamila. What's good, queen? What's happening, King? Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. For sure, for sure. So, you know, here at, you know, on this YouTube segment, one of the things that I pride myself in doing is being able to break down information to the trappers with ease. But moving forward, you know, we stopped the trap in Tuesdays. But the reason why I stopped that, because I really wanted to be like more impactful. I wanted to like get this knowledge out there. And so you do a great job as being one of the lieutenants inside of the Trappers Anonymous community. And we do a lot of breakdowns. So you have this dope thing called Wild Out Wednesdays, where you really like get the trappers involved and you really break down the stock with them. And I think that was awesome. So one of the things that I want us to do weekly is come in and just do these great breakdowns for people, whether it's stocks, whether it's CEOs, whether it's um, long-term investing, anything just, we want to make it more clear, more precise for the people. Um, so before we get in, and before we have our conversation, and then we got something real special for them, I want you to tell them a little bit about you, um, you know, and, and a little bit about your investing journey, because I, I think it's important. I'm going to be real. I think it's really important because I think um, when it comes to stocks and investing, it's kind of a male-dominated lane right? It's kind of male dominated. So one of the things I want to do is just bring another voice to my platform, right? Someone who also looks like me, sounds like me, but is, but is of the other of gender. You know what I'm saying? So I love the idea of just being able to bring one of the queens in who I know know they stuff, right? Because people know I know what I'm talking about. You know, we did a great job at just breaking down, making investing dope for everybody. So let's give us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about you, right? And then now um, we got something special for him. Absolutely. So again, I'm Jamila, part of the wonderful group of Lieutenant Trappers with Baker and Lala. Shout out to them. And just a little bit about me. Born and raised in New Orleans, just like Big Trap. Um, but journey just a little different. So a lot of people talk about when they're first exposed to the market I actually had a high school basketball coach expose me to the market when I was 15 years old, right? She told me about a Roth IRA and why I should invest in it. You know, said, hey, get if, when you get your, cop, your high school graduation money, you know, everybody gonna give you a little bread for graduating from high school, take some of that money and put it in a Roth IRA. Of course, you know, I was young, stupid. I ain't do it, right? I ain't do it, but that seed was planted. Right. So then about three to four years later, after I graduated from college, it came back to me. Somebody else mentioned it. Right. And I was like, man, I need to do this. Coach told me to do this when I was 15. If I had done it when I was 15, I'm 22, 23 now, man, it would have been a big difference. So that's when I first started investing. I was about 23 years old. I started a Roth IRA with $25 a month. Wow. Right? That's where I started. And I literally I committed to doing that. Um, I didn't know anything about, you know, mutual funds or stocks or anything like that at the time, but I knew I needed to do it because I trusted the person that first told me about it. So I did it and I did, I really never thought about it again. So I kept doing that. And then I got an opportunity, you know, working in corporate America for several different companies over the years from Walmart to Ross Dress for Less, Dollar General, you name it, mostly retail. I had an opportunity to invest in 401k, buy individual stock at a discount with the company, which I thought was really cool because I felt like, oh, you're going to give me a 10% discount on your stock. And so I'm going to get it at a discount. And then if it grows some more, I'm going to get more money. I just felt like that was a no brainer. But at the time, you know, that's a busy life. It truly is a busy life. So I always knew I wanted to learn more about it, but I didn't have time. Right. And I kept talking to people, kept talking to people. And I just happened to be it was the end of December, 2019. I was in the hair salon, Angel Eye Salon Spa in Metairie, right? right? I'm in the salon and somebody bring up, man, you know, I'm interested in getting to stocks. They was like, Jamil, I know you into that too, man, but I rock with trap, right? That's what they told me. I was like, trap, I hadn't heard of it. So I get on Instagram, I'm looking, I search, I say, okay, let me follow. Again, still busy, still don't have time. And then somebody else came back. Right as soon as the pandemic hit, said, 
I rock with Trap. Like Trap teaching the game. You gotta, you he from New Orleans, you know, this our boy. Like, you know, that's how they talking to me. I was like, well, you know, I love people from New Orleans. So I get back into it again. And I said, yep, yeah, let me get in this. I don't even need to think about it. I heard one Trap in Tuesdays. One of the trapping, I heard one. I was like, I don't need to hear no more. He from New Orleans. And you know what he's talking about? I was like, I'm sold. I'm done. I get in the group. And it's it, honestly, it's been one of the best experiences I've ever had. Just being with like-minded people. And, and frankly, having met most of the people in the group and feel like family. It really does feel like family. We're learning. We're growing. And it's, it's taking my investment journey to a whole nother level. Right. I was doing good. Don't get me wrong. But just in this year alone, the decisions and the pivots I've made just with the information I've learned from you and everybody else in the group has taken my portfolio to a totally different level. Nice. So that's a little bit about me. Nice. So I heard you say that the company was giving you all stocks on discount. Let's yeah. talk about that because, you know, one of the things that we focus on in the group and what we do, we talk about just getting discounted stocks, you know, value yeah. investing at its best. And so another thing that I like that you said was that you started your Roth IRA doing it for $25 a month. Like, and that's one of the things that we always talk about is, yo, one share at a time, one share at a time, um, dedicating yourself to investing whatever you can every month, building that wealth brick by brick. Let's, let's, let's talk about how important that was to you and how that ignited like, yo, I can really do this. Like, how did that feel when you were like, yo, I'm putting $25 a month in, but it's $25 a month. Like, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm, I'm pretty sure you exceed that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But just how important and how pivotal that was. Because I don't think people believe me when I be saying like, yo, I started like every paycheck, putting something down for my daughter, putting something down for my daughter, putting something down for myself, living off 30% of my income, investing 70% of my money, not saying that I bought a stock every time, but I was putting money in that account. Always, like we say, loading up the clip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we was loading up the clip. And that's important for us to know. And that's important for us to be able to do. So tell me a little bit about that journey. Well, I'll tell you, Number one, I think it's important to know that you can start with $25, right? So that's the first thing. And I've been told that, but like I said, you're young, you don't know no better. But once I started doing it, and again, not to, you know, fully disclose my age, but, you know, that's like 17 years ago, right? So $25 a month, 17 years ago, right? <laughs> Took a couple hands, takes a couple hands to count that out. What it did was it, it started the discipline of paying myself first. Right. And so I've never stopped doing that in multiple different investments, whether that was when I was working for those companies in the 401k, buying their stock consistently, investing in my Roth IRA, investing in my merch, whatever it was, it, it implemented that discipline to where I don't even think about that money anymore. I don't think about it. If it's consistent and it's automatic, that was the key. That's what I was. That's what my coach told me. It's got to be automatic. You know, and she had bought like Microsoft or something when it was like 10 bucks, imagine, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But it was the systematic, automatic withdrawals from my checking account going into my brokerage, right? That discipline is everything. Because over time, you don't, you don't miss the money. And before you know it, you've got this massive portfolio of wealth built for you. Mm -hmm. and, and not to mention to your point, if you get that 10% discount on your job, which don't even know if they're working for a publicly traded company that they sometimes have access to that but getting the stock at a discount even when i didn't know any better because i was in retail and everything we do is about getting something for the cheap and selling it for the high i knew wow. that this was a good deal right if i'm a 10 percent right. off even if the market comes back 10 percent, i'm still at break even mm -hmm. so and that just made sense that's important too about just the discount. So one of the things, how can we, how can we tell them, like how can people who may be working for the Walmarts, who may be working for the Ross, who may be work, if they don't know about it, what is one way that they can figure, figure it out? Like what is one, what do they do? Like go to the manager? Like how do they go about saying, yo, how do I get into this stock option? Cause that's essentially what it is. Right, exactly. so get into the stock option program that you all offer, but also like, what are the rates? Am I getting to that ten percent discount? Am I buying one and you matching? Like, so how how can they go about really like getting into that? 
the first step, it, depending upon where they're working, is going to be HR, right? Mm -hmm. HR or their personnel department, whatever that looks like, they'll be able to, there's probably a 1-800 number at this point where you can call, say, I want to find out, do you guys offer this, right? And then if you do, do you offer it at a discount? Is it, is, it, is it something that I can do with a payroll deduction, right? And then also, it, depending upon how it's set up, they may require you to be vested. There's some different technicalities, but you just ask the questions one after the other and get started. And then ultimately, mm. most of those companies set up a, a brokerage account for you, right? You to mm. purchase it out of. So it's not even with the company, right? Wow. I think when I was with Walmart, it was CompuShare. When I was with Ross, okay. it was E-Trade. They set up an E-Trade wow. account for me. I didn't even know. Again, young and stupid. I didn't even know. They, I got like five brokerage accounts. Let me just say that. Because <laughs> they right, want right. to you every time because they can't personally hold that, those, that stock for you, right? Mm -hmm. so those are some of the things, again, didn't know. I got a Merrill Edge account. That's, uh, I forgot who set that one up. Maybe Walmart set that one up for me. So I've got all these brokerage accounts because they were, I, that's how they were purchasing my stock for me. Um, so that's oh. just talking to personnel, HR, and get started. Wow, that's dope. And I, and I think you're going to help a lot of people with that information. Because me personally, I never, you know, worked a job that had that. You know, I was in construction, I worked in the union, and then, you know, the trap don't have no... Uh, don't have no benefits. <laughs> right. You know, the trap don't have no retirement or contingency plan. You got to do that all self-directed. Right. You feel me? <laughs> right. You got to do that all self-directed. So one of the things, um, you know, I admire you so much because I see the work that you put in the group. So I am honored that you would even come, you know, bless, you know, what we're doing here. And I look forward to building with you. So I know we had a conversation. So today we're going to give them something special to give them an idea, like some of the things that we're going to do moving forward. So we talked about more or less one of the things that people have problems with is really just staying in the market right? Being consistent. You know, one of the things I always say is time in the market is better than time in the market. And we know that with like new investors, you know, they always try to ride the wave and, and, and get into this, the hot stock of find this, the next Amazon, or this, the next, this and that. And, you know, we kind of don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We give everything time because we realize that the market is literally designed for us to win. Right. And because we know that the market is designed for us to win, one of the things that gives us leverage is saying, I now have time to research this business, not going off what the TV told us, not worrying about what, you know, these other platforms are saying, not even looking at what I'm saying, you know, which I don't even talk about like an individual stock you should buy, but understanding that we have time and the market is designed for us to win. It's designed to build our wealth for us, even with the ups and downs, right? So one of the things people normally try to do is ride it, get out, reap. I've had people say, I bought this stock. It's up, you know, $2. Should I sell right now and, and, and get back in at a lower price? You know, uh, I bought this stock here and I want to sell it. And I'm like, okay. And so one of the things I often say to people is this, why did you buy the stock from the beginning, right? Did you buy it because you thought it was a great company to be invested in? Or did you buy it trying to make some quick money? Me, I'm going to be real with you. Every instance in my life where I was trying to make some quick money, overall, it ended up with me taking a loss. Right. Or me learning a painful lesson. Even if it wasn't a loss, I learned a painful lesson. From Something it. happened that hurt. Something happened, right? But when you look long term, and I think that's one of the things we go, we really basing on and we pushing on, is just being long term investors and understanding that there are times where we sell a stock, right? Even if it's if it's way overvalued, there are times where we don't sell it completely, but we can take some money off the table. But when we're taking money off the table, we aren't taking money off the table just to sit it in an account, right? Correct. There must be a plan. Okay, we're gonna take this money from here, and we're going to intentionally put it here. So one of the things I want us to talk about, and you have a beautiful breakdown for us that I can't wait for you to share for us. So do you mind sharing that for us? Do you mind getting into that for us right now, showing us what you have? Absolutely. So, and to transition into that, as I'm loading this uh, presentation, one of the things that um, I tell people in the group all the time is, one of the things that I think is so important, and I use a personal example, 
you know, I was able talking about that 10% uh, discount with the company, I was able to start buying Walmart stock at, I think it's about 34, $35 a share. Right. And that was back in 2006. Right. And so in 2006, I'm buying it at 34, $35 a share with a 10% discount. So roughly about 30 bucks a share. And then if I'm sitting and holding that, we all know where Walmart is trading right now. Right. And if I consist, I'm consistently buying and I'm holding it, that's 14 years ago at this point, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right buying my, if my cost basis is around 30, $35, I'm doing mm -hmm. great type of investment. So or I could just be jumping say, in and out. Let me ask this right quick. Let's tell them what cost basis is. That's a good, that's a good point. So basically where I buy the stock, right? If, let's say if I bought it today, Whatever that price is that I buy that stock for, and I'm using the example of that 10% discount, but let's just take that off the table. Wherever I buy that stock at today, that is my cost, right? So if I buy 100 shares or something at $100, I put that money in, that is my cost basis. If it goes up to $200 a share, my cost basis is still 100, my, but my, the value of the stock is now 200, I've made hundred dollars per share on each of those mm -hmm. because my cost basis is sitting at a hundred bucks i like that and right. how does that cost basis shift as we buy certain dips in the market so when one of the things we need to understand is this like it's a reason why we get stocks at a discounted price right because even if it goes if it goes up we good and we get them at discounts because no matter how it performs it always most likely performs better than our discount Right, so it's a win-win situation for us. And one of the things we also do is, let's say we buy it at that 100, and then it goes up to 150 or 160, right? And then its stock goes back down to 125. Like for me personally, that isn't a real discount. Right. Right? That's buying a dip. Because if we bought it at a higher price than we bought it, now we bring the cost basis up. Exactly. At, you know what I'm saying? So now what has to happen for us is we buy the business and let's say over the next year or two. So one of the things I like to do is reevaluate my investments every six to seven months. You know what I'm saying? Reevaluate them, see where the price is at, see if it's still worth what it was before or see if the valuation has increased. If it's increased now, I can say my discount price now comes up a little more. Correct. Correct. You know because they've added more value to the business. One of the things we want is a business that continuously adds value for us, right? Okay. So now that discount was maybe a hundred before, like because the next six months or something that has done well, maybe now I'll buy that one twenty five instead of one hundred. You know what so I'm saying? That, but that's the reason for getting it, not the dip necessarily. It's exactly. The value. That's it's the value. Value. Yeah. And a lot of people get, they're not thinking about, they're just seeing the price move up and down. They're not thinking about, well, is there more value now if I buy it at this slightly higher price than my cost basis? Why? Right. They're not connecting because, right. because that value is going to take the stock the next leg. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's what's up. That's so what's let's up. definitely get into your uh, presentation. Uh, and listen, I want y'all to listen. This is something that we bring in. I told y'all 2021, yo, you know, Trapper is just about adding crazy value, right? So this is one of the ones we're going to bring into you all today, man. So, uh, and we're going to do this weekly, me and the queen. Like, we're going to do this weekly. So just be prepared that we got some work for y'all. So let's go, queen. Let's get into it. So time in the market versus time in the market. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. So the first thing I'm going to share with you guys is really the cost associated and what can actually happen if you are trying to time the market, like pick your spot, like if it drops or buy the dip, you know the terms we hear. The biggest cost is being out of the market when the market unexpectedly surges upward, right? And if you've tried to buy the dip or let me wait till it goes down a little bit more, you've seen stuff take off and run away from you, right? You miss the best performing moments because you're trying to time the price, right? So that's the, that's the biggest, that's it. That's what we're talking about today. Right, this slide right here, I'm gonna take you through 91 years through 2018, right? Through 2018, so that's 91 years. That's over nine decades of time. 
And this is what this is what the market looked like. So if you're investing for just one year, put your money in, take it out, one year, one year periods over that same 91 years, 66 you had 66 positive periods and only 25 negative periods. So not too bad, right? But if you're investing for three years in holding, you get 74 positive periods and 15 negative periods. Watch how this number keeps going down on the negative side. Five-year periods, 76 positive periods, 11 negative periods. But 10 years, that's where the sweet spot is in my opinion. 77 positive periods and only five negative periods when you are looking at 91 years of history in the market. And you see this little line graph or the line chart over the top of this, you go from 27% of the periods being negative down to 6%, right? So if you're in the market, you buy and you hold over a 10 year period, 94% of the time, you're gonna be experiencing nothing but positive and only about 6% of the periods will be negative. I like those numbers, right? So next, kind of breaking you through if you actually put up some dollars in the market, right? So from 1990 to 2019, so roughly about 30 years, if you put a thousand dollar investment into the market and you did not touch it, you'd yield about $17,000, right? But if you miss the top 10 performing markets in an attempt to sell, sell when the market's going red and you miss that surge, right? Like we talked about on the first slide, you miss that surge, that same investment is only going to be 7,000, a difference in almost $10,000 on your money. If you miss the top 20 performing months during that same 30 year period, you'd only have $3,300. So that's what trying to time the market will get you. And that's over a 30 year period. We do that over a 20 year period from 2000 to 2019, you see the numbers 3000. If you miss the top 10 months, it's 1000. If you miss the top 20 months, $722. Same thing in the last 10 years, if you take that same $1,000 investment from 10, 2010 to 2019, left it untouched, you'd have about 3,500 bucks. If you miss the top 10 performing months, 1700. And if you miss the top 20, a thousand. So you can see how that money tapers off if you miss those key months. And we're talking only 10 months, right? Over a 20 year period. And it's going to cost me that much money. In some cases, half to almost 60, 70% you're going to miss out on if you just miss those 10 months. So I hope that's starting to convince some folks to try, stop trying to time the market, right? And just get in there and be in there. Here's an example specifically on a company. You know, it's one of the Trapper's favorites, Big Trap favorite company out here, Chipotle, right? Got the whole world saying it right now. I don't know what they was talking about before. It's Chipotle, okay, <laughs> let's, get right. let's get that name right. They're gonna come to you and ask you to do a commercial in a minute. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> so if you're buying and selling and getting in and out of the market, let's say you, in the scenario one, you buy 10 shares, you caught, the major, major correction in the early part of this year at 540. It goes up, it's at 691, you're feeling good. Let's sell it, get our money and get out. 27% return, you make about 1500 bucks. Scenario two, you say, okay, well, it started running again. Let me get in again at 968. And man, you did good again. It went up to 1325. It's where, about where it's sitting right now. Made 37%, $3,500. So in total, getting in and out, you did all right at about 5,000 total. But if you actually bought the 10 shares at the 540 and you held it to basically where it is right now, you'd have 145% return on your money for a total of 7,850 on a good quality company at the right price. Now let's, right? Stop, right just let's stop right there. Like yeah. that's so important for us to know that one, we're buying quality companies. That's the reason why we do the research. That's the reason why we understand how the business makes money. That's the reason why I literally waited for this business, right? And because, so you thinking I made 5,000 and I'm like, okay, well, I made another, you know, what? 1,700, 20 something hundred more than you. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that adds up. Yes, because right? it's just one company. Yeah, but one company, that adds up. And that helps us because we not, the objective here is to build wealth, right? right? And we build wealth 
over the long term. You don't build wealth going in and out. We're not trying to be traders. That's not what I want to do. We want to buy these rental properties and let the rent just keep going, right? I don't want to fix it right here. You know what I'm saying? That can be another strategy, right? But for us, the best strategy is letting these businesses work for us over the long term. And we, when we think like that, what happens is we don't worry about the short-term things that happen. We don't mind buying an asset on sale and start running from it or trying to time it. Oh, I think the, one of the questions people ask me often is, yo, you think the market going to crash? And my, I don't care if it crashes, yo. Like, that means I got more companies I can buy. And the ones that I already believe in, you know, I've got a plan for them as well. So I think this was real important for us to learn and for them to see those numbers actually. Uh, man, you're doing a great real job. Deal. Real Keep deal. Going. Here's another one, Tesla, right? A little firecracker, right? So you buy and sell 10 shares of Tesla. You got it right after the split, roughly about $502, but you got nervous, right? So it doesn't always work in your favor when you're trying to time it. Dropped all the way down to like 328, I think, on the low after the um, split. So you said, look, I'm out at 357. I've lost 28%, 2,900 bucks. I'm good. I'll wait and see what happens. It might go a little lower and I'll get it then. But you miss it because at that point, after that little bit of consolidation, here comes the long-term fundamental trapper. They're going to hold that 502. It's roughly about 722, 45% return, about $2,200. But instead of selling at 357, that buy and hold investor saw it as another opportunity to average down and bought at 357, got another 10 shares. So now the buy and hold strategy has 20 shares with an average cost of 429. So the 357, the 10 shares at 357, they grow to one, they go basically to 722, 102% return on investment for $3,600. So now you got 20 shares and roughly about 5,800, whereas the person trying to time the market didn't, lost 2,900 and didn't see the opportunity to get back in. Now the stock's moving parabolically, probably won't go back to 328, 357 and missed it right? So trying to time it again, like I said at the beginning, you miss that surge in the market if you're not already in the market. I think that's one of the things that hinders people too is like when you get out, you don't know when it's going to just take off, right? You don't know when that's going to happen, right? The TV don't know. Nobody don't know. I don't care how many patterns you look at, like you just don't know it. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing to do is again, let's research the businesses. Let's find out you know, what they've done, what they have coming up. What is, what is management plan on moving forward? Uh, what are the risks involved? What are, what are the um, investing objectives? How do you plan on expanding the business? So when you hear companies say like Tesla, yeah, this Model 3 is coming out and we plan on dropping this many, you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, they about to, this is about to go crazy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So if you in there and you rocking with it, then you can just let that thing build. And so I think that was amazing as well is understanding how ultimately every year there's about eight to nine months that the market is just going to surge. There's about a three month span. And that's in between when you think about three days here, two days here, one week here that the market is down. So we think in nine out of the 12 months in a year, the market is running. There's no way possible for us to try to gauge that. Nope. So let's just let it, let's run the marathon. With them. Let's go let's, with them. Let's get out of the 40-yard dash and let's just run the marathon. It's easier. It's much easier, right? So we talked about Chipotle. We talked about Tesla, right? That's what you're hearing on the news. That's what people are talking about. But let's talk about one of these trapper favorites, right? United Rentals. Come right? on now. Nobody <laughs> talking about United Rentals. You're talking right now, Queen. <laughs> not making the news. It's just like a little hush hush thing that you see when you're on the interstate equipment moving uh, on, on a construction site. You see some scissor lifts, you see for all kinds nice. of right? generators, you name it. But here's yet another good quality company with almost no debt. If you took thousand dollars December 2010 and you dropped it in United Rentals, at that point in time, let's say you got it for 23 bucks, whew, right, $23. The low for the year was 2281, right? And you said, I'm gonna hold this. In 2014, just to do a little checkup, the high was 106, right? 
77 was the low. December 2017, 169, real nice. But then it pulled back. The low was 101 for that year, right? And this is when people tend to get a little scared because my I, I got it. My cost basis is $23, but I always hurt, hurting and jerking. This is too much, right? But then here comes 2020. Whew. High of 229, low $59. We almost got completely back to 2010. So you would think, well, I shouldn't be in that. I should get out, cut my losses, or at least take the gains. I doubled my money. But if you held on to it and you rode the high, that $1,000, regardless of what happened in between, would be $10,000 as of the end of December. And that's the power of buying and holding, right? So even though we saw that 59 dip, what if you had averaged down or raised your cost basis a little and bought 100 more shares like we know Trap did? I ain't trying to be all in his business, but I know he bought some more. <laughs> I already know, right? So again, another quality company, you're not going to hear a ton of news about it, but that's a 905% return, a 905% return over a 10 year period. And we, like that first slide showed you, there's going to be a few negative periods, a few negative months, but they are far outweighed by the positive months. And you can see it with a nine X return on your money, right? So that's a little bit about that. We want to give you one more piece of information before we wrap this up. And it's just a company highlight. Since we're on Chipotle, we're going to try and give you a little spotlight every week. And that's on CMG, ticker symbol CMG, Chipotle, right? So just speaking about what's, what's been happening with them. Why are they running? Why are they so parabolic? It's just a fast food chain, right? Well, revenue's up 14% at $1.6 billion, right? Digital sales plus 202%. We all know this is the future. They were already positioned to capture on those digital sales and they've made further enhancements since the pandemic started. Cash is king, right? You've heard it. If you've watched any Trapper videos at any point in time, you're always going to hear them talk about almost no debt and a ton of cash, right? That's what you're going to hear. Those are two things that I pay attention to because I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow the money, right? So cash is up 71% year over year at $1.1 billion, right? We always like to find quality CEOs, Brian Nicole, former CEO of Taco Bell, chief marketing and innovation officer. He's also, he also spent 10 years at P&G, which I thought was very interesting. And he also sits on the board of Harley Davidson, right? Current price, roughly about 1300 bucks a share. The market cap's 36 billion. Year to date return, approximately 60%. Solid company set up position for the future in technology as it relates to fast food and or quality fast food, which is what everybody's focused on. Currently, some of the analysts have it a price target of roughly about $1,745 on the high, about $1,383, which is basically there now, and a low of $800, not sure what they're smoking. But uh, most, most analysts, 13 roughly have it as a buy, some have it as a hold, and reason for those holds if you really pay attention, it's because it has been moving so parabolically and ultimately it has to have a correction, right? But we'll be looking for those opportunities to reevaluate the business like we were talking about earlier and see if there's more value at the next correction to where we can actually continue to add shares on such a quality company. So that's our company spotlight for this week on CMG Chipotle, right? And if you, <laughs> hey, if, if y'all want to see Trapper in a Chipotle commercial, go ahead on and do your thing. Flag, you feel Let me? Let know, because I know I want to see it. I think that was something, too, that was important when we talked about was actually um, seeing, like, understanding that no company just runs forever, right? So even if it is running, we ask ourselves, at, at what point does it become, you know, overvalued? And then we can say, okay, well, it's 100% overvalued. It's 200% overvalued. At this point, I don't mind taking a little bit off the top, not exiting my whole position, right. right? Let me take a little bit off the top. And so what we mean by taking a little bit off the top is taking food off the table, taking profits off the table is taking some profits from this Chipotle stock, right? Which you know is a winner, which it shows you it can perform over time, right? And then you take some profits and say, okay, well, I'm up uh, 60%, 70%, 100%, 200%. I don't want to leave this company totally, right? Because it'll probably never go back down to the two, 300 mm -hmm. that we got it from, 400 we got it from. Is that 13, 1400 now? 
even in a pullback, so we start saying, okay, it can, we see the analysts say 800. Okay, so we do our research, we reevaluate it, and maybe our business now is worth $900. Okay, right. cool, so let me sell some of these shares, put it in another business, right? Because we're not selling just to put it in the account and let it sit there. We're going to share some of these shares and put it in another business like our United Rentals, like, you know what I'm saying, another business that can other, give us other performance. Like there's so many businesses that we can invest in, right? But the idea is finding the value in the business and understanding the business that gives us a leverage or gives us the competitive advantage against the market. And I think that's what's important. Like we want to have the advantage on a house. Anytime the house has the advantage on us, we lose. We yep. want advantage on a house, right? And the way we get the advantage on a house is saying, I'm in this for the long term. And right. once we do that, we set ourselves up to win. So, man, Queen, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for this presentation. I look forward to you and I continuously building, continuously providing value to the trappers, continuously providing value every week in this YouTube community. Listen, y'all, it's only going to get better. Me and the Queen have a lot of stuff cocked and loaded and ready, um, but we're going to just flood it. So thank you, Queen. We appreciate you so thank much you. for this. Listen, y'all, man, like this video, subscribe this video. Um, um, the queen, if you want more from her, she will be coming every um, week in this. But also, she is one of the more prolific lieutenants in my Travis Anonymous group. Um, she has a great breakdown segment called Wild Out Wednesdays. That is her day where she just goes crazy and she gets with other Travis in a group and see who wants to come along on a journey with her and breaking down her whatever business. I think this week y'all did. What business y'all doing this week? Micron this week. MU. Micron, uh, take a sample yeah. MU. So they doing that this week. I know previously you did, uh, I know last week, I think you did PayPal, right? Or you did? PayPal and Square. We did a little FinTech. You did PayPal and Square. I saw that. I saw that. So she does a great way. And these are the type of people that's in my, in the, in the that, that are lieutenants in the group. Not talking about Lala a baker, like you know, we got, and, and, and then myself, you know what I'm saying? We in the group. So definitely, definitely, if you want to join that, the link is below. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, man. Let's build this up. Thank you, Queen. We appreciate you for sure, for sure. I appreciate y'all, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. It's the Queen, Jamila, Jamilia. So we'll holler at y'all, man, next week, man. Love.